Are you dealing with shoulder pain that may be caused from frozen shoulder, also known as adhesive capsulitis, or maybe you are just wanting to learn more about this condition, then this is the right video for you. Hey there, I'm Dr. Shrewsbury, a physical therapist, and in this video we're going to be covering the anatomy, the causes, the symptoms, um, surgical and non-surgical treatments. But as always, if you like this content, then please like, subscribe, and share as your support means a lot. So first, let's talk about the anatomy of the shoulder joint in more detail. Uh, the shoulder um, is highly mobile. It consists of three main bones, the humerus, which is the upper arm bone, the scapula, which is that shoulder blade, and then the clavicle, which is your collarbone. Um, they are all held together by ligaments and surrounded by a protective capsule filled with synovial fluid, which helps to lubricate the joint. But interaction of these three bones allows for its remarkable range of motion. So causes of frozen shoulder, while the exact cause isn't always clear, there are several factors. One common factor is inflammation of the shoulder synovial lining, which can lead to thickening and tightening of the joint capsule. This may occur due to an injury, previous surgery, or even underlying uh, medical conditions like diabetes which can affect the connective tissues in the body. Moving on to symptoms, frozen shoulder typically progresses in stages. In the freezing stage, you may experience aching, pain, um, and increased stiffness in that shoulder. You know, this can last for several months. Um, then comes the frozen stage where the pain may decrease, but your shoulder remains um, pretty stiff, making everyday task challenging. And then finally, during the uh, thawing stage here, you'll start to regain range of motion. But you know, sometimes this process can take a year or more. Um, these cycle of symptoms can, you know, impact your daily life. Next here, let's discuss how healthcare professionals may diagnose frozen shoulder. Uh, they will take a detailed medical history and conduct a physical examination, paying close attention to your shoulders range of motion, strength, and any pain points. Uh, to rule out other conditions like rotator cuff tears or arthritis, they may order imaging tests such as x-rays, an MRI, or ultrasound. But going back to, rain, to the range of motion, sometimes with uh, frozen shoulder there is a capsular pattern um, that is common, meaning that you'll notice a greater reduction in range of motion with shoulder external rotation, okay, and then shoulder abduction, so this motion here, and then shoulder internal rotation, so going inwards like that. But that doesn't mean that that will be your range of motion loss. Next here, looking at the surgical aspects, in some cases, frozen shoulder may not respond adequately to non-surgical treatments, and surgical intervention becomes a consideration. So let's explore some surgical options. One approach is known as manipulation under anesthesia. During this procedure, the patient is placed under anesthesia and the surgeon gently manipulates the shoulder to help break up adhesions and improve range of motion. Uh, following this procedure, a rigorous rehabilitation program with a physical therapist uh, is crucial to help maintain that progress made. Um, another surgical option is arthroscopic capsular release. In this minimally invasive procedure, small incisions are made and a tiny camera is inserted to view the inside of the joint. The surgeon then carefully releases tight portions of the joint capsule, allowing for increased mobility, right? And recovery after the arthroscopic capsular release tends to be quicker compared to other methods. Um, it is important to note that surgery is typically considered when conservative treatments have failed and the condition severely impairs the patient's daily life. Um, surgical risk and benefits should be, you know, discussed with your healthcare provider and, and the decision uh, should be made um, as a team, right, between the, the patient and the medical team. Lastly here, let's explore non-surgical treatments for 
frozen shoulder in greater detail. So physical therapy is the cornerstone um, of management, right? So your physical therapist will develop a personalized exercise program tailored to your specific condition and stage. Uh, these exercises aim to help stretch and strengthen the, the shoulder muscles and the ligaments, gradually improving range of motion and reducing pain. Heat and ice therapy can be beneficial for managing pain and inflammation. And in some cases, your physician may recommend NSAIDs or corticosteroid injections to further alleviate the discomfort. But again, it's essential to maintain consistent follow-ups with your healthcare team for that optimal recovery. But let's go ahead and go over a few exercises that may be beneficial. Hey there, welcome back to the exercise portion of this video. Uh, so the exercises that I'm gonna be going over is gonna be mainly geared towards mobility. So range of motion, uh, especially very important for the initial phases of frozen shoulder uh, in that um, freezing stage and then into the frozen stage. Uh, it's very important to try to maintain as much motion as you can. Uh, so the first one here is just going to be called the pendulum. So what you're going to do is say the left shoulder is the affected shoulder for me. What you're going to do is you're going to lean over, good posture though, and you're going to let your, your shoulder just kind of dangle. And what you're going to do is you're going to use your body to move your shoulder, okay? So that's where a lot of people uh, have difficulty with or do this exercise wrong is they move their, their shoulder, but it should be the momentum that moves your shoulder caused from your body, right? So here, you're just going to rock your body back and forth like so. And when you do that, your shoulder moves because of that momentum right and so you can go forward you can go side to side you can do circles right so it's a really good exercise to help promote that range of motion into that joint and also creates a little bit of a distraction force too so it should feel good um, again this is really initial phases of that adhesive capsulitis all right, so the next one here is going to be focusing on stretching the internal rotators. So here, you'll get a towel or blanket. You're going to go around the back like so. Okay, so you can kind of see shoulder or the towels right on top of my shoulder, right? And then it's hanging down. And then you're going to take your affected shoulder and you're going to try to grab that towel or blanket like this. Now, this might be painful. Okay, so you have to kind of ease into it. Go to what your body allows you to move into and here with your hand you're going to gently pull your right or your, or your non-effective arm up and as you do that your affected shoulder is going to raise up into this motion like this okay and so you're just going to gently pull up and go as far as you can especially as far as you can tolerate and then once you find that spot you're going to hold for about 30 seconds and then you'll relax okay and then you'll you'll do that again so two sets 30 seconds all right next one here is going to be involving I'm going to be using a cane but you don't necessarily have you can use a, a stick a cane a broomstick you know whatever you have available to you but we're going to do three motions here so you're going to keep your hand on top your other hand on the bottom right so we're going to Again, this is my affected shoulder, okay? So here, you're going to use your non-affected shoulder to assist you through these motions, okay? So the first one here is shoulder flexion, okay? And again, you're going to go just as high as you can, okay? As high as you can, as high as you can tolerate, and then back down, okay? You're going to do 10 reps, two sets. Next one here is going to be shoulder abduction. So again, tolerate as much as you can, okay? You're gonna go up as far as you can, just like this, okay? And again, 10 reps, two sets, and then 
The last one here is going to be shoulder extension. So here you're going to try to bring your arms back like this. Okay. And so you can try it that way or you can go this way. Right? So whichever you prefer. Um, same thing, you're just trying to assist that arm back. I like this. I like this one better, but some people like the other one better. So again, 10 reps, two sets. All right, so the last one here is going to be uh, just a finger climb. So you can do it at a door frame, you can do it at a wall. But again, you're going to take your affected shoulder and you're going to just try to go up as high as you can, right, that your shoulder will allow you. And then you can kind of slide back down and then climb back up like this as high as you can and then back down. Okay, and you can do that one 10 times, two sets. All right, so that is uh, a few mobility stretching exercises that you can try, uh, especially there at the initial phases um, of adhesive capsulitis. Again, just to help promote that good range of motion, right? As the, as the capsule starts to tighten down, you'll notice your range of motion decreasing, and it's important to counteract that by introducing some of these, these exercises. The last thing you want to do is not move your shoulder at all and it get even more tight and restricted and you not even be able to move it, right? That's going to cause your outcome to be a little bit more challenging in terms of, your, of the recovery. Now, after you start to gain some of that range of motion back, then it's important to follow up with specific strengthening exercises, um, which I'm not going to go over in this video. Um, I may do another video at some point to go over some strengthening exercises you can follow up with. But again, the range of motion aspect is, is really important. Frozen shoulder can be a long journey, but with enough time and proper exercises, you'll be able to overcome this condition. Remember, it's essential to consult with your healthcare professional for a proper diagnosis. But if you found this video helpful, please consider liking and subscribing for more content like this. Thank you for watching.